Hi guys, I'm back out at the Fine Line Automation 4x4 router. Uh, I initially posted a video on this machine, um, an overall view of it. I'll do uh, another one as far as building. This one's mainly focused on this controller. Um, a couple people asked me to do a video on that. I'm not going to go too in-depth. I had to redo this video. Uh, the original one ended up recording vertically. I couldn't flip it horizontal. Uh, it was running a little too long anyway, so um, hopefully this one will be a little bit shorter. I already removed the top. Um, you can see that this is a modular case here. You can see the screws. So this case comes as a a flat pack so you just put the thing together it makes it a little bit easier to drill these holes uh, for switches and e-stops and pilot lights and things of that nature um, when you drill these holes I suggest you use a step drill it makes things go way faster because this is not aluminum it is steel so uh, you're gonna want to step it up to hold some of the holes or Pretty big, especially on the back side. They're close to a half inch for the uh, aviation plugs. But um, in my first video, this is a pump switch that I talked about. It's lit. Uh, originally, I was going to put a pilot light on all three of these. I uh, decided I wanted to do something a little bit different for that one. Uh, so that's why you'll notice this little tick mark up here. I should have put a couple more sets down here to keep everything on alignment because... Um, I did build this box so that uh, if I want to expand it, I can do that. You look here, uh, stepper drivers. You can see the space right in here. Um, that's intentional, so in case I want to add another axis, I can easily drop that in there. You notice the wood bottom here, and that's what all the components are mounted to. Um, that is on purpose because I didn't want to drill a whole bunch of holes in the bottom of this case. Uh, in case I decided to, you know, swap equipment out or, you know, change something up, and then the screw holes don't line up. So this is just like uh, hobby plywood, and I put a clear coat on it. It's at Home Depot. Uh, so it's a little less than a quarter inch, and it's actually perfect because that's not screwed into the bottom. Um, these screws on the side here, actually, uh, you can't see it, but they actually go right over the top of this here. So it locks it in. So, I mean, it's in there solid. All the stepper drivers um, obviously are marked. Um, this is just common wiring that, like I say, Ugra sells it, uh, but they sell it by the foot. I went on, you know, I think it was eBay and found a roll of it for five, it was 500 feet for like 60 bucks. So <laughs> it was enough to wire this whole machine. I could probably do another three or four machines with, you know, with all the wiring would have cost me sixty dollars if I had to order it by the feet anyway, and then if if you don't order enough or your harnesses are too short, you're kind of out of luck. So and then you know that's wasted money. These are the power supplies. Uh, this one's twelve volt. Um, these are the two thirty sixes. They run the steppers only. Um, they are tied together, parallel together, so they just run through the single switch. And also it's tied into this 5 volt, which only runs basically the uh, breakout board only. Um, then, if you're wondering why I have such a large 30 amp power supply in it, uh, it's because of this pump that I talked about in my first video, this MCP 655, that... Um, Computer builders use. Um, I do build computers in my spare time, water cool systems, and things of that nature. 
So that pump originally wasn't designed for computers. It's a industrial pump that you know somebody figured out that you know could be used for computers. So that's like the standard for water cooling, the gold standard. Everybody uses that pump. Uh, you can get cases and housings and all kinds of upgrades and make them look better and you know for doing computer work but anyway uh, that pump is very powerful and it's more than enough more than enough to power through this whole system all the way through here all the way through that cable chain down and around and through here is probably that thing I believe does an eight, 18 foot head um, it's probably pushing three four hundred gallons an hour through this pump I mean, it's flying through there, and, you know, turned up. I could turn it down, but I just have it running full bore right now, but I don't think there's really a need for it. Um, so that pump's pulling five amps. Um, and I had some concerns about running, like, these 12-volt fans and adding anything else, 12 volts, you know, like the solenoid for the air. Um, so... It looked much neater just to put three of these the same size and they are tied together obviously with this uh, with these strips here if you don't you know they're, they're very unstable up at the top so that's what those are for and then they're just mounted in here with just typical three-quarter inch um, L L channel that you know you can get a Home Depot you measure the holes out and then uh, how I mounted it uh, was through these studs. They're basically, uh, I think, 1032 screws. And I ran out and counter sunk from the bottom. Um, but if you do that, make sure that you super glue the, the head, put a drop of super glue around the face of the, the screw. Or they're going to want to back out because this wood is very, it's, it's kind of thin. And it's not really enough for those the threads of those screws to bite into. So. Um, and since they are machine screws and fine thread, they have a tendency. I, I, I had to remove the components out of here many times, you know, test fitting and things of that nature. And the, uh, I noticed some of them started spinning on them. It made spinning on me and it became a mess. So I had to disassemble this whole box just to get the bottom out so I could get the screws out. And uh, I had to lock those in there and the super glue, uh, they haven't budged since. Um, all this wiring here is shielded um, just for mainly the, the steppers for the motors. Um, the signal wires, this is just normal data wire, um, eight conductor, twisted pair, so it does provo provide some kind of uh, RF frequency rejection. Enough, I haven't had any stuttering or any issues with this, so... Um, and it's very convenient, it's all color coded, and it just is palm treed here, it just comes across the front, palm treed here, and then this is where it comes through here. And then uh, your X, Y, X, Y, uh, Z, A, B, C axis, um, coming across here. Um, and then step and direction since they're color coded you can put step and then direction and so when you get back over here you know exactly what's what and there's no guessing this is that far up RS-485 that I talked about with the uh, plug to plug um, connector so it's plugged in here and not in the, the spindle itself or the, the VFD and the wiring just comes down around in the back here. And I'll flip this around in a second. So you can get a little look at the back. Um, I tried to keep everything neat. So what I did was uh, use terminal strips for uh, basically a junction for like 5 volts. And then the 12 is down here. So I could put multiple wires in there and tie them together and keep everything, you know, somewhat together. Um... And through the back here, uh, there's a 120 coming in. It is grounded to the case. Uh, it just comes around and then through this channel here to keep it away from any kind of signals or anything like that. And then 
all other wiring goes through this channel. And then up through here. Go ahead and turn it around. Okay, so this is the back side. Um, so all you got to do is just plug a USB cable in here now. Just like, you know, a component. Just like a computer thing, but the RS-485 is in here and away from those RF frequencies in that uh, VFD. Uh, DD-25. These labels were done with a uh, P-Touch label maker it's a type where you can go on your computer and you know put symbols and download jp jpg images and print them that's where i got like these water and the spindle and proximity everything i just uh, type those up but you can get things like db25 and usb connections and power connection symbols and just print them up put them on i didn't want to do any engraving no need for that but like I said, all these are step drilled. If you don't know what it is, it's like a cone. You start at like a quarter inch and each step opens you know, the hole up. So it's very easy to do with that. It still takes some time since this is a steel box. And then in my first video, this is the uh, cooling fan that I had to add as an afterthought because this box was getting too warm. It was a bear cutting this hole in with a, a circle cutter. Uh, keeping it straight, it, it, I swear to God, it took an hour. So, if you build a controller, um, you, you're going to need a fan on the back, at least one or on the front or something, pulling air in or pushing it out of this box and getting this heat out. Uh, as you can see, these power supplies have little fans on them. And they blow out heat and it gets this thing pretty warm, believe it or not. Uh, this 12 volt already qu quit on me. The fan inside, and I had to replace that. So, these fans started making noise on you. You know, you hear the fan making noise. Don't replace the power supply. Go in there. Take these four bolts out, or four screws. There's one, two, and two more on the bottom. And then re remove the four uh, screws that hold the fan to the case. And just pull this top off and put another fan in it. They're 60 millimeter fans. So remember that 60 millimeter and they're not the thick fans. They're like a little over a quarter of an inch thick. You'll, you'll see them uh, when you get this one out of here, you'll know which one. You can just go to eBay and get them anywhere. They're like, you know, two or three dollars. You may have to change the end of it out because the normal PC fan connectors uh, won't fit in this. It's, it's a, like a really tiny connector. So I have pen uh, crumpers and things, but I didn't want to take the chance, so I just cut it and soldered the end off the bad fan on that and plugged it back in, and uh, good to go. Um, let's see. Flip this back around. So, um, again, this fan here is only for these stepper drivers. And you can see the vent holes in the bottom here that I thought were enough. Uh, wasn't good. So, um, and then this little rogue wire right here ended up, uh, I had to run this five volts for the, um, proximity sensors up here. Originally I had it somewhere else and, um, things didn't work out. So I had to move it down here. Um, so neat enough and good enough just leave it this fan here uh, isn't native to this power supply I just threw that on because um, I know things get hot in here so uh, I don't need this thing quitting on me out, out of all of them um, this is the enable so this enable switch here uh, powers this on powers this on and the enable side on the um, stepper drivers so like I said in uh, my first video these the wiring of these things may pose a problem for some people when you're looking at the wiring diagram if you have any questions I can probably answer them for you as far as this jumper that needs to go in your signal wires um, 
power is pretty much a no-brainer and the uh, stepper power uh, PUL and direction but this jumper is kind of weird and hard to understand looking at the schematic and so are the uh, signal wires that come back up to this breakout board but once you get it and you see it and you're like oh I, I got it because this thing worked for me the first time you know like I said I did have to look at quite a few YouTube videos and look at other people's wiring because I was getting a little confused myself so you know it all worked out good so I just wanted to do this little short video on this um, if anyone has any questions as far as the wiring for this or there's something you don't understand for this uh, breakout board for your signals and you know your e-stops and everything on this side uh, let me know and I can probably straighten that out for you really quick and save you a whole bunch of heartache um, that's about it I hope you can get a few ideas of how to set up your box how to you might want to position things inside. Uh, it took me a while to do this. It took me a long time. I didn't want to drill any holes until I knew I got everything right. And then, I'm, again, on the back side, here's the vacant for expansion um, aviation plugs. I ordered them. And they sent 10. It was 10. You know, you know the eBay thing. You order one, it's like 10. So, I said, why not make 10 holes? Because I know I'm going to use seven of them right off the bat. Four for the steppers. Uh, this one is the proximity e stop. Um, water cooling is down on here. And then there's three vacant. And then there's one other one. I can't think of which one it is right there. Sec oh, the spindle. Um, for the control of the spindle, it goes through the relay, the power. It comes straight off this uh, 12 volt through here. Um, the powers of the pump goes through here. Um, so, hope you got something out of it. Um, I had to do this before trying to cut these tracks, having some problems. But you know, once I put this box back in, I didn't want to have to pull it out to do this video. So, um, if you like it. That's uh that's great. So thanks for watching.